Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to sew along with you the Pick a Pocket Wallet by Chris W. Designs. This is my first Chris W. Designs pattern and I tell you I really, really enjoyed this one a lot. Now it doesn't look like it's a very big wallet, it's very slim lines, but my goodness there is a lot to this wallet. So this pattern can be done again depending on your machine I did mine in a faux leather and a cotton inside um, it would be great in all cottons um, let me show you some of the features of this bag so it has a snap uh, closure you could definitely make this a magnetic snap if you preferred on the inside now there's two versions of this pattern I did the one with the extra card slots so that gives you eight extra card slots right now or right here um, the other option is you can make this into another zipper pocket so you'd have a zipper pocket here and a zipper pocket here as well as the can't wait for it one slip pocket two slip pockets so yeah so either you'd have a zipper pocket here or the eight card slots like I have. And then you have two slip pockets in behind that and then another zipper pocket in the middle here. On this side, you have four card slots, an ID holder, so that's five card slots, as well as a slip pocket here and another one right here. Isn't that crazy? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 18 slots like that's crazy um if i counted right uh what did i use in this bag again i used quilting cotton on the inside i strongly recommend you use quilting cottons as this does get a little bit thick in seams especially right along here because you do top stitch through this so i definitely um make sure you are using uh quilting cottons i believe for the inside here um I have fusible fleece in here, uh, which is from Pelon. I used EB Fuse Light on all of my um, cotton pieces. I have EB Fuse Medium for some of the card slots. You'll see that in there. And besides that, I'm trying to remember, I believe that is really all. Um, my vinyl is the loom black uh vinyl connect line vinyl from uh, galaxy customs my i don't know where i got this fabric from and then this is just a quilting cotton from the quilting cotton classics from fabricville or fabric land um oh and i got a glittery id window that is clear vinyl from galaxy customs and yeah that's it all my hardware well my zipper and zipper pull are from these ones are from Emmeline Bags. My snap is just a kit that I got off of Amazon. And besides that, that's all there really is to this. I don't know if I forgot any of the interfacing. I guess we'll get to that when we start getting into the tutorial. Um, anyways, how about we get to it? You're gonna need number three zipper tape, number three zipper pull, some snaps. I just got this kit off of Amazon your two tab closure pieces, one of them backed with Peltex outside of the seam allowances, your main body stabilizer, I am using Decoville Heavy, your one pocket CB lining piece with EB Fuse Light or a medium woven interfacing outside of the seam allowances. All my um, medium woven interfacing is EB Fuse Light. Okay, so this is pocket AB lining piece. You have your EB Fuse Light as well as half of that is also covered with a fusible fleece outside of the seam allowances. Your a body is zipper pocket. I have my lining piece with EB Fuse Light. I've marked the top of all of these as well, as you may notice I'm pointing out. Uh, your body exterior lining and exterior piece, your lining piece has uh, your medium woven interfacing outside of the seam allowances, your ID window, uh, your card pocket backing. Now this does not have to have any interfacing on the back. You'll also want to mark, mark the top of this one as per the pattern piece. Your ID pocket backing, it is not interfaced either. 
Yeah, okay, my card slots here and I have uh, some EB Fuse medium for the card little uh, interfacing pieces here. You could also use an 809. My card slot A pieces. And of course my EB Fuse medium pieces for that as well. Okay, so I am going to go ahead. I'm doing raw edges for my closure. So this is how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take some double-sided tape, make sure I keep it outside of the seam allowances where we'll be top stitching. And I'm going to put these wrong sides together. Now, if you're doing a magnetic snap on the lining side of this, you would have wanted to already have installed the male part of your magnetic snap. Um, you're gonna go around this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance top stitch. I am doing a snap, so it will be going through both of these pieces. Now you're going to see me, I always hand crank around my corners because I like to try to get a nice and rounded corner and I find hand cranking gives me that little bit more control, especially on an industrial because it moves so incredibly fast. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pattern piece here and I'm going to find my snap placement, put a little hole in there, line it up with this piece, and mark where my snap is going to go. Like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and install my uh, capped snap part here, like I have done. And now along the sides and that curved bottom, we could trim those seams up to an eighth of an inch. So just on the two long sides and the curved bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead once this is done and I'm going to edge paint these. Okay, so now let's prepare our uh, zipper pocket. So you want to make sure it is the right length as per the pattern. I have uh, tacked my end so my zipper pull won't go off. On my lining piece, I have marked at the top, top as per the pattern piece. I am going to measure in... I believe it's about three quarters of an inch from one side. And then another inch, those measurements are in the pattern. Uh, make sure you do a little snip on the top there. Now we are going to want to make sure that this rectangle we are drawing for our zipper pocket is nice and even that's why I've marked my center and then I can make sure that I have this box nice and centered go ahead and draw that center line down this box and then little quarter inch V's in the exterior this is like installing any zipper pocket I do have a class down below in the description if you need more uh, detailed description in that Okay, so now I am going to take my main piece here, my main lining piece, make sure I have my top, both my tops facing up. I'm going to measure in as per what the uh, pattern piece says, line my pocket piece right side, right sides together with that main piece, nice and centered. I'm using my ruler kind of as a guide there. And then where we drew that line, I'm just going to put some pins here. We will be cutting this away eventually, and we're going to go ahead and sew around that rectangle that we just drew, sewing these two pieces together. Okay. 
Now I may be saying as per the pattern, that's because I don't want to give away any of the pattern measurements, but all of those measurements are definitely in the pattern. Okay, so now what we want to do is go in and start a cut line on that center line we had drawn. Go in and um, clip to those quarter of an inch lines and then out those V's without cutting that stitching we just did, but as close as we possibly can get to that stitching without cutting it on both sides. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to pull these through that whole wrong sides together. Finger press this really good, roll it between your fingers, and if you're using cotton like me, go ahead and give it a good press with the iron. Okay, so this is what we have here. And now I'm going to take my double-sided tape. I'm going to make sure I have it below where we will be uh, top stitching. So you want it to be over an eighth of an inch away so from that rectangle side this is what we're going to be using to hold our zipper tape but we do not want it coming up our needle at the same time okay so you want to make sure that your pull is going to the left closing to the left like I have here and your top where we have labeled top on that main piece is also going to the left and we are going to center that zipper tape in this rectangle so again we want the pull going to the left and our main pattern piece where it says top, we want that to be going to the left as well. Once you have the top the way you want it to go, go ahead and take the double sided tape off at the bottom and position it where you want it to be. Then we're gonna take this to the machine and sew this in place with an eighth of an inch top stitch all the way around this rectangle. So I really recommend taking the time to change into your zipper foot here. It really doesn't take time to change your zipper foot and trust me, it just makes your seam allowances so much easier and your top stitching, especially with zippers, so much easier. So I'm pulling my threads long as I do not want to have a backstitch line here as this will be seen. So I did not backstitch, I held my threads back and carried my on my way here, making sure my needle is down before I pivot. Now before we get too far, I have my needle down, I'm going to pull my starting bobbin thread and uh, pull up a loop and pull that top thread through, carry on, and then once I get back to where we started, I want my needle to land in that very first hole of that very first starting stitch. So you're going to see me hand crank here, so I have a little bit more control on where my needle is going to land and end. And once I'm there, I'm going to pull those threads long. I'm going to hold on to those threads. Do not let them go so you don't lose track of which one is your bobbin thread. Give it a little yank, pull that top thread through, and then pull, uh, tie those four strands off in three or four knots. Now, you're more than welcome to go ahead and backstitch instead of doing this. This is just my preferred way of doing it. And we get a nice seamless top stitch. Okay, so there we go, making sure my zipper works. Now we're gonna take the bottom of the zipper and we're gonna match the two of the zipper pocket and match the two short ends up like so. As well as the two sides. And then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull the main lining out of the way and just sew from one of the folds and around the three sides without catching our uh, main, our top main panel here. So start at one of the folded sides and we're gonna go ahead and do this at about, oh, three eighths of an inch or so. So up one side, I like to backstitch over top of the teeth just to give it a little extra security across the top of that zipper pocket lining piece and back down the other side, once again, back stitching over top of the zipper teeth. Okay, so that is done. And I'm gonna go and tr trim these seam allowances up to about a quarter of an inch.
and we have a complete zipper pocket. Okay, so now we're gonna take our main exterior body, be aware of where we have labeled it top. We want our zipper pull to be closing upwards. Put these right sides together. Again, I marked the wrong, the wrong place for the turning hole here. You want that turning hole to be on the right. I do correct this later, but I had to pull out all of my stitching. So again, when it's facing this way, you wanna put them right sides together. You wanna leave about a, a six inch or so turning hole on the right hand side, not the bottom as I have done here. And go ahead and clip that all the way around. Again, I like to keep my mistakes in so you guys see where I went wrong, um, then you know how to correct it. So all I did was uh, sewed up my wrong hole and went and pulled out my stitches where I needed my turning hole to be once I had sewn it all together. So a little bit of picking I had to do. Super easy fix for this though. All right. Okay, so from our um, the start of where our turning hole is going to be, we're going to back stitch and stitch all the way around. Okay, so here you go. We have our opening on the right. My error is all corrected now. <laughs> Now where our corners are here, or along the top here, you just wanna trim the lining piece back, not the exterior piece. And this is just gonna reduce some of the bulk in those seams when we go to put this wallet together. So make sure you're only cutting back or trimming the seam allowance of the lining piece here. The only place you don't wanna turn it is along the turning hole. Then you want to go in and kind of cut the corners on an angle like this without cutting into those stitches. This is going to help us get a nice sharp corner once we go to turn this out. Once you've got that done, go ahead and turn this right side out. Poke out those four corners really good and pointy. Using a turning tool like this really does help or a chopstick or the end of a pen or pencil. Okay, and go ahead, give that a really good press. And I have also turned my, um, opening edges inwards. Before we go to sew up that top, we do want to figure out where to put our nameplate. So what I've done is where the opening is, that is the back of the wallet where our tab is going to be. So we want the nameplate to be on the front here. So I folded it in half. I decided where I wanted to place it and I have installed it through the opening in the wallet there. Once that is done, we can secure these raw edges turned in because I'm using vinyl here and I couldn't press it. I'm just using a little bit of double-sided tape to hold that seam allowance turned down. My cotton side, I have it pressed down. So you want to make sure this is nice and even with the seam allowance. We have a nice square wallet. Make sure it's nice and even, even the lining and the main panel like so and go and give that another good press from the cotton side. Okay, so we are looking good here. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take our body stabilizer. We're gonna be sticking this in. Um, I'm gonna put it in and see how this piece fits. I can see that it's just a little bit too big, so I am going to have to trim um, a little bit off of each side for this to fit nice and snug in here. So I did trim about that much off of each of those sides and I got it to fit in there nice so those corners good. Once that's done, you pull that out. You want to mark on that stabilizer piece which was where the opening was of the opening of the wallet piece. So we're putting the 
uh, tab on the right thing because we are going to install the tab on our deck of the heavy piece as crazy as that sound. So you want to find the center. We're again working at the end that um, will be matched up with the opening in the exterior panel. I've marked down about a quarter of an inch centered and then again one inch centered like so and kind of drew a line to form kind of like an H I guess. Now we're going to use some double-sided tape to help hold this in place. Just putting it around those one inch lines that I drew above the bottom one and below the top one. I'm going to take my flat piece and now I have my sticky side of my Decaville heavy piece, the part that can be fused uh, face down as that is where um, I'm going to fuse it on the lining side. I have my tab with the right side up stuck down to the non-adhesive side of the Decaville heavy piece if that makes any sense at all. I'm going to just give myself a little rectangle here um, stitching line with an X through the middle as we are going to go ahead and sew this to that Decaville heavy piece just like so. Again, you want to make sure that this rectangle is a good half inch, if even a little bit more, away from the top of our deck of a heavy piece. Okay, and then you're going to take this and you are going to put it back inside our uh, wallet piece here. I find folding it or rolling it a little bit and then reaching in and smoothing out those rolls is the easiest way to get the deck of all heavy and to lay nice and flat. Make sure it's going right up into those corners. Take your time placing that deck of all heavy piece like so. And then on this lining side, go and give it a good press to make it so it adheres to that Decaville heavy piece. Okay, you can see how it's all stuck down on the lining side, but on the vinyl side, it's still loose, which we want. Um, we want to figure out the placement of the other part of our snap. So I'm kind of folding it where it will go, pushing on it until it makes a little mark of placement where I want it to be and just marking right there. Then we're gonna go in make sure there's a little bit of a gape so if when the wallet's full it will be able to close you're going to go ahead and install that backed with a little piece of decaville heavy through the opening in that top so just to kind of give you a visual you will install the way um your kit says to do it or how if you're doing a magnetic snap you can see i am um, i put my little uh i think it's called an anvil inside so i can do my little hole here now I'm only going through that exterior piece, so you want to make sure you're not going through the whole bag here. I'm taking my little pole and a scrap of Decaville Heavy, putting it on the little post, putting it with the anvil inside the bag, sticking it through that hole, adding my snap cap, and installing it. Once that's nice and secure, double check to make sure the snap works and everything lined up and you're good to go. Okay, so we still have this opening in the top. That is okay. Now we're going to work on our lining pieces. So this is our ID wallet. So we want to make the ID wallet window border, I guess it is. So you're going to measure in this rectangle as per the measurements on the pattern. Make that rectangle in the center here. Join your corners with an X within that rectangle you just drew. Now we're going to just go in and cut that X out. 
Just start it and then go ahead in with your scissors going all the way to those corners. And then we want to fold these back like so and give it a good press with the iron. So this is what we have here. So you can go ahead and trim these triangles back to about a quarter to a three eighths of an inch um, seam. Now I'm going to go ahead just in these corners because I'm using cotton and just going to put some fray check in these corners just as a safeguard in case there's like a little bit I'm going to do it on the right side as well just in case there's a little bit of fabric showing through I don't think there is but I just want to make sure okay so on the back of this we're going to take some double-sided tape and we are going to put it Within an eighth of an inch away from the rectangles, again, we are going to be top stitching this, and especially if you're on a domestic, you don't want to be sewing through this double sided tape. So, along the two long sides, we're going to take our clear ID window, and we're going to stick it nice and centered over top of that rectangle window and the double sided tape is going to hold it in place and what you're going to see is that rectangle window is covering up those raw edges. Okay, so now what we want to do is want to use some more double sided tape here and just on one short end we want to or on both short ends, sorry, we want to fold in that um, the top short ends using the edge of that vinyl piece as a um, kind of as a guide where it's going to go. So I'm just have it butt right up against the vinyl piece and folding it over like so. And then we're going to go ahead and just um, along the top of one of the folded edges, we're going to top stitch across. And then we're going to go back in and top stitch around that uh, ID window rectangle. So once again, I am going to go ahead around this rectangle, pulling my threads long and doing my seamless top stitch, just like we did with the zipper pocket tying my threads off in the back. Okay, so now those, uh, even though it's going to be enclosed, um, we have these raw edges here. I'm just going to take some fray check along them just again as another safeguard. Now, one thing I'm going to do that isn't in the pattern is I like in my ID windows to be like a little hole for when you push your card through, like a little thumb hole. So I'm just using my um, cutout punch set that I got from Amazon and I'm going to hammer a little thumb hole in the middle of my ID window. So now we are going to work on our card slot A pocket panel. So we're going to measure down three quarters of an inch and make a mark. It's really hard to see here because I am using black fabric. Now at those three quarters of an inch mark, you're going to fold in those short ends. So that gives us the three eighths of an inch um, seam allowance folded in to cover up that raw edge. Okay, now we are going to alternate four inches and three and an eighth inch lines 
until we have eight lines total. So four inches, and then from that four inch line, three and an eighth inch, and then from that three and an eighth inch line, four inches, so on and so forth, until you have eight lines total. Okay, so this is where we are going to put our little pieces of decable or EB Fuse Medium or uh, your 809, Pelon 809, and we're doing these just below the four inch lines and fusing them on. These will be the where the folds of our card slots are. It just gives them a little extra um, stability without having to interface the whole piece. Okay, so at the where that first one is, we're going to fold over. I like to use a piece of cardstock here to help give a nice crisp edge. Fold up to find that next marking, nice and tight like so. Give it a press. And then I use the cardstock on the ones that I'm kind of going blind and can't see where it is. So I stick it where the line is, press, fold back again right sides together at that line, and keep doing this accordion style. So the first fold, we once again started with wrong sides together, and then right sides together, and then wrong sides together, and then right sides together. Okay, so that gives us all of our card slots and our top and bottoms are folded in so there's no raw edges. And you wanna make sure that your cards fit vertically in these slots, and mine do. Now, one thing I did wrong here is I should have went in and measured that each of these were only an inch away from each other. Um, I did not do that, so mine look huge and I had to trim up later, but it still worked out. So yes, now we're going to go ahead and top stitch all of those folded lines. We got the first one here. Take that one, fold it to the back so you can get to the second one. Again, you want to make sure all of these were only an inch apart from each fold line to fold line until you've done this. Mine are a little bit more, so my card slots will be a little deeper, and but that's okay. probably could have said nothing you never would have known but <laughs> I have to let you know when I've made my mistakes so okay so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to baste up the side of these to hold these card slots in place Now being on an industrial machine and this being an uninterfaced piece of uh, cotton um, it's causing it to wrinkle up a little bit. That is because I my machine is not meant for light cottons, but it still works. So you can see I had my piece was way big. It should be the same size. That is because I did not double check the sizes of those card slots, but that's okay. All I'm going to do is take those folded edges and fold it in more like this to make it match up. Okay, so I have that pressed to fix my mistake. I'm gonna take my ID window and the short ends where we had the uh, edges folded over, we want one on the bottom and one going up, facing up this way. So our raw edges are on the sides. Our finished edges are at the bottom and pointing to the top of the card slots. Make sure this is nice and centered. You want the folded edge to be as even as it can be because we will be top stitching all of these together in the end. So we want it to be a nice even edge everywhere that we have the folded under seam allowance. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and base down those two sides. And you can see how this is gonna fit nicely right there now. Double checking my card slots again. And I'm good. Okay, so now I'm going to take my card pocket lining piece and you can see how these are different sizes. So I am going to go ahead and fold over the short ends of that card 
pocket backing piece so they are the same height. Once that is done, we're going to take two raw edges, not the folded edges, but the raw edges and put these right sides together and didn't do the same on the other short end like this. And it is gonna look a little bit funny because that backing piece is gonna be kind of loopy like this. It's too big, but that is exactly what we want. And I will show you why here momentarily. So we're gonna go ahead on both of these sides and sew those together with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that is done. You can go ahead and turn this right side out through that kind of a tube. And this is where you're going to see what happens with the magic of that back piece being too big. Because when we go to put it fat, or not fat, flat, you're going to see how the excess has created this border along our card slots on the right side, which is awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch down one of those sides. Okay, so now we are taking this pocket piece that has the fleece on it. Once again, measuring up that three quarters of an inch on both of these sides to fold in that top seam allowance to a three eighths of an inch. Once that is all pressed in, we can fold this in half, matching up those folded lines right sides together. We want to make sure that this is the same width as that uh, card slot piece we just did. Very important that they are the same size and width, which they are. So go ahead and give that a good press. So they are wrong sides together. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to sew the two sides, raw edge sides here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once that is done, kind of snip the corners so they'll be nice and pointy without uh, cutting our seams and trimming up that side seam allowance a little bit to reduce that bulk. Turn this right side out. Poke out those corners. Give that a really good press. Okay, so now we want the opening of that pocket and our card pocket C right side up on top of that matching up that opening, clipping them together. You want to make sure these are super, super even. Because again, this is going to be, these folded edges are going to be top stitch in place with our exterior piece. So I'm just double checking that everything is even, clipping it together. Again, the left side of our card pocket piece and the opening of that back pocket piece. And we are going to top stitch them, which we have done. This is what we got. So you're going to kind of put these down like so. Flip it open so the card slots are open. And just that back pocket piece, the bottom fold of that, we are going to put nice and even on top of our main panel, lining up those top edges. This is where we're going to close up that hole where our we put the um, the tab on. So make sure you are not catching your card slot piece. This is just that pocket piece. I'm going to measure in an eighth of an inch from each side as a guide for myself for the top stitching. And we are going to top stitch in between those two lines with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's done. This is what we have. Now we're going to work on our card pocket C. So these are going to go together almost exactly the way as our skinny card slots. Again, 
Uh, you're going to measure in the two short ends by 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm super uneven here. I have to trim my fabric up a little bit. I obviously cut wrong. Once you have those seam allowances folded into the wrong side, draw lines two and a quarter inches down from that first fold um, across and then alternate lines two inches from that and two and three eighths inches from that until you have eight lines total between all of your drawn lines. Now we're back at our iron, just like we did with our other card slot pleats, we're going to take our EB Fuse Medium or uh, Pellon 809 pieces. Starting at that second fold, you're going to start from that top fold. The second fold from the top fold, you're going to place these nice and centered every other fold line or every other mark line. Once again, these are going to work into being the top of our card slots the folds of them. And then we're going to go in the same way, bring it right sides together along that first line, give it a good press, flip it over, and once again we're going to use our cardstock for when we're going wrong sides together because we're kind of pressing blind just to make sure it is staying where it needs to be. Folding it back right sides together, folding at the next mark, giving it a good press, Taking that cardstock piece, putting it under here again, making sure our card slots are looking nice and even, and continue until every fold has been folded. Now you will notice that these card slots are closer together than the four that we did and that is exactly what we want. That is how we are fitting in more card slots here. Okay, so we just want to double check with a credit card or what have you that our depth is all even and our cards go in nicely, which they do. Now we're going to go ahead and top stitch each of those folds just like we did with credit card A. Okay, now that is all done. Now we want to measure in and find the center here and draw a line down the center, make sure it's even on both sides. And you can see we have that extra piece that isn't folded under, kind of folded out. That is going to be coming up um, and under to the back. So you want to make sure we're not sewing through there. So go ahead and sew about halfway just where, or based halfway on each side, just where the card, credit card slots are, not on that bottom part that we have folded out. And then up through that center line that we drew just to the top of the credit card slots. So the folded lines of them. So we have that excess length of this piece that is just kind of hanging out at the bottom. So I've gone up and then I'm going back down uh, the same line just to give it a little extra stability. Okay, so now I have folded the back of that up so our two folded edges match up with the short edges. My cards look good. I am going to hold those two uh, folded ends of this where we folded the seam allowances under. 
matching up those folds and then sewing across the top with the top stitch. So what this is doing, folding it up like that, it has given us a backing to our credit card slots. So we have uh, no wrong side showing. Okay, so that is done. I'm once again making sure that there is space on either side of where the credit card slots will go so my cards will fit, and I do. Now I'm taking my pocket CB piece, lining piece, I am measuring up once again, three quarters of an inch on both of the long sides so we can fold in that seam allowance again. We've been doing that a lot in this pattern. <laughs> okay, once that is done, you're gonna fold it in half, match up those folded in seam allowances and secure with clips. Again, these folded seam allowance you want to be as even as possible when we're going together and we're gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around this piece. So the base, the two short raw edges, top stitch across those two folded edges we brought together and down the short edge, leaving the bottom folded part unsewn for now. Okay, so you're going to see it is a little bit wider than our zipper pocket. That is okay, or not as our card slots. This is that same thing with the last card slots where the backing is going to be wider because it is going to create those kind of accent pieces to the side pockets. What this is also doing is creating one of our slip pockets behind our card slots. So go ahead and sew down here. And you are gonna see once again that that backing piece is looking bigger, which is exactly what we want. Okay, now we are going to trim off to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance here. We want to reduce as much bulk as we possibly can. Then go ahead and turn this right side around like so, and you'll see it's created that kind of nice frame around our zipper pockets. Once again, I'm checking just to make sure I didn't go too deep and that my cards fit, and they do. Now we're going to fit this onto the bottom half of our main wallet piece matching up so this is the side where we did not top stitch those pockets you want to make sure that all of our folded edges match perfectly and we are going to go ahead once we have them all clipped and we are going to top stitch the last remaining three sides so you want to make sure you're going nice and slow that you're catching all of the layers because now we are sewing through everything and some of it may be a little bit thick because we have many pockets here, but just go nice and slow. When you get to the beginning of the pockets on the top and the bottom, just do a little bit of a back stitch um, to secure them a little more. So we did the top one, there's the bottom one. And work your way all the way around. There you have it. You can see I backstitched here for extra security, right here and here. We have all of our pockets. We have no raw edges. Everything is functional and good. Admire your work. Make sure everything was caught. And then we're done.
All right, that's it. That's all. Talk about a quick so it is awesome. It is slim. I think this is going to be one of my favorite wallets to make going forward. I just don't believe how many pockets are on this. It's it's great. Anyways, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please, please do subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. If you'd like to support my channel further, um, you can buy me a coffee. That link is down below. And if you haven't uh, seen it already, make sure you check out my front page and my little uh, my membership video that explains my classes. If you'd like to join some of my live classes, you definitely can do that too. Anyways, until the next one, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.